Hey guys, it's Vens, back again with another Super Coach video. This time it is the round 19 review. And look, we had a pretty good week. We put out a 2,635, uh, went up 147 places in the overall, and got to 677 for our season rank. So, a uh, pretty good outcome for us. Um, but it's good to be back in the 600s. Uh, and look, it's definitely, I, mean, I, I took a bit more of a look at how far away we are from, I guess, the rest of the pack, and obviously it's a bit out of reach to hit top 100, so we will just, I guess, sort of aim a bit more closer to our goal of the 500. Uh, let's get that first, and then we'll see where we can sort of go from there, but look, great week from us overall, um, things that really went our way, we had some good games there, I, I unfortunately missed the Friday night game, I did go and watch, uh, the new Spider-Man, which was absolutely insane, and I do recommend watching that if you get the opportunity, because it's, it's, just, it's just great, honestly. Um, music's absolute banger as well, I love the soundtrack of it, so yeah, that was a really good Friday night for me, uh, and a great Saturday morning, so as you can see, we woke up to the Sicily scoring massive 171 as our VC, and I was obviously pretty big on the Sicily VC all week. Um, into the Tigers, we all know Tigers love a Chaos Ball inside, and it just absolutely feeds our, those intercepting defenders, so um, we were all for that, and I know he had a bad game last week, and that sort of scared people off, and I just don't understand why, he got double tagged by Zeeble and Ford in a game that they won quite convincingly, so it uh, just didn't make sense to me. Saying that, I did actually tip Hawks to get up in this game, I really thought they would, and they were for 90 nine percent of it but unfortunately threw it away at the end there and that was a bit upsetting um no not really for me i know my um sister's younger brother did go to the game and he was, <laughs> he was not a happy man <laughs> um but look sicily actually left some meat on the bone too because in the last five minutes of that game i swear he didn't even get a point didn't get a possession just unfortunately just didn't do anything and that's when the game was up for grabs obviously richmond running you know, coming, storming back, um, and he just didn't get a touch, and if he could have just, there was a few times he got fingers to intercept marks, and he just couldn't clunk them, um, and it just, yeah, there was, there was a few points there that if he could have got an intercept mark there when the game was on the line, or just even a possession, it, it would have been worth a lot of points, and that's why there was a bit of a meat on the bone here, he really could have put a comfortable extra 10, 20 points on his score, uh, if he got a bit involved in the end there, um, but that's okay, look, we take a great VC there, we were very happy with that, I know a lot of people took Bonton Pelly or English's VC, um, so we got a good 50 points gap on them there, uh, Stewart also came out with a really cool game, which was really interesting for him to get pushed into the midfield and still be really good in the mid again, um, so definitely something that if Geelong do in future, it's not like Sinclair where he gets pushed into the mid and we actually dread it because we're like, this this, this ain't where he scores. Stewart actually puts out the numbers and look, he does attend the centre bounce and then kind of floats behind the ball as the extra after attending the initial centre bounce. So still plays his sort of Stewart role, but just has the opportunity to get points in the centre bounce, which is very nice. You know, more opportunities to get points is much better. So... Yeah, backline, really good overall. Will Day's 90. We're happy with that. Um, look, usually we look at our weaker links here as Will Day, uh, Sheasel, and Keys, sort of the weaker leagues. But look, we'll take a 90 off them. No problem there. Keys with a 97. That Look, he was looking atrocious. It was not looking like a good game. And then he kicks two goals at the end, gets like a score assist, and he just like gets really involved in the game when it ends up being a close game and there's a lot of points there and somehow gets to a 97. So that was massive. Uh, and she's ends up with a 126. So they actually did pretty well for us. So we're pretty happy with that. Uh, midfield overall, though, was not really a problem there. We did have Gordon 66, which I think a lot of people would have been really caught off guard, and it would have been really unfortunate for anyone that got a straight captaincy in that game, because I did not see that 66 coming. So, yeah, really unfortunate for them there. Um, with Laird being out, since we're running 23 premiums, we still just ran a full premium team anyway. Uh, obviously, that's considering Keys, Sheasel, and Day as premiums, of course. Um, but yeah, hopefully Laird will be back soon to help bolster this side. Uh, a few players that just went nuts that I did actually consider, because uh, obviously we did move Tom Green to Sarong, is I did consider George Hewitt, and I considered holding Green and upgrading Fletcher to Hewitt, just because obviously Hewitt's, Hewitt is uh, replacing Cis uh, sorry Kennedy, um, and 
it did feel like I don't know just the potential of Hewitt potentially returning to like last season's form was just like through the like I don't know it's just it's just something that's always in the back of your mind when you look at him and he's so cheap and then with Crips going out as well I was very very tempted to get on him so I was thinking maybe flip chop to Crip uh, to Hewitt and then I run a 24 man premium team uh, that would mean I have to play Hewitt on field and have Led and Green on the bench this week but I decided against that I decided I would go for the Sarong, I thought that would be better moving green to Sarong, I liked their run as I talked about last week, and I did think that he would go a bit bigger into Sydney, um, obviously he would end up with a 127, so it looked really good, but obviously this is for the rest of the season that we're making this trade, so um, then the comparison is, as much as he outscored him by 26 this week, there's five more weeks to consider there, uh, obviously I would have been using him as a loop, so in out of the team, depending on who was playing or not. Uh, but I think Sarong will be better in the long run overall, so we're pretty pretty fine there. Um, another line that we do sort of struggle with is our ruck line in the sense that we're not running English, so we have to death ride English. Uh, English versus Briggs, he put 40 points on him this week, but it's not too bad. It's not the end of the world. I think we compensate with the rest of the team being really strong overall. Um, obviously, I'd love English in there, but look, I guess this, instead of getting English, like Briggs up to English, I did go... Uh, ahead and bring in a 23rd premium instead, which, look, I held off and brought in Sicily. I mean, maybe if I didn't flip so many of these players, obviously I flipped Sicily on the three weeks, we flipped uh, Dunkley, we flipped, um, well, I mean, Oliver was definitely a good move there, but uh, there's definitely been a few times we've used trades to sidewards, and if maybe I hadn't used so many sidewards and just maybe hold like Dunkley an extra week or held Sicily, then I could have maybe upgraded Briggs to... English, which might have been better for the team overall on the run home to make up the points that we lost over that. Um, it's hard to say, and look, the team's going well, so we, we can't, I, I can't be unhappy, I can't look at that and be like, man, that could have netted me more points that way, I haven't gone down and crunched the numbers and figured that out, um, and look, Briggs is really, he, he's doing well enough, um, I think that this is well enough, um, there's always going to be a gap there, but the rest of the team will hopefully uh, make up for that because the rest of my lines are hopefully stronger uh, because I did end up with such a cheap R2. Um, but yeah, Butters ends up with a 101 as well, which uh, I think a bit disappointing in the sense that obviously we traded Dunkley to Butters. Uh, Butters only really made 60 points on him and then what well, Dunkley made back like 13 points or so this week, 14 points this week. So he's, you know, there's like 45 points between them five weeks left. Dunkley probably closes that gap, which is unfortunate. It just sort of means the butter sideways didn't really work out. And look, if I did have that one extra trade, I definitely think I would have gone Fletcher to Hewitt if I could have, uh, just because I was really big on that. Um, but look, it just it wasn't something that obviously happened. If people are still finishing their teams or they want a 23rd player, I think Hewitt is absolute gold. Uh, obviously, with Sam Walsh holding himself as well, it does seem like Hewitt's just going to be, yeah, he's probably going to be solid. Uh, great cover, 23rd player, or if you need a cheap player to finish your team, it's hard to say Hewitt because he's been in and out of the side, but I do think he'd be a great 23rd player um, if you're looking for that extra premium. And look, he's pretty cheap, so you can really just move some of these uh, rookies that we have on the bench, if you still have Johnson, Fletcher, you can move him to Hewitt for probably not much more money. So if I do look at that, what how much is Hewitt priced at now? George Hewitt, yet yeah, 292k, that is insane, you probably downgrade, yeah, Fletcher 10k more, that's, that's, that's crazy, and he went up 32k this week, anyone that got on him last week for 260, uh, it's, it's why I wanted to get on him, but at the same time, it's, what, I would have downgraded Fletcher to him, gone to 100k, just sitting there doing nothing, which doesn't really matter, and then run 24, would have been better this week, is it better overall, as I said, I, I'm hoping not, I hope I made the correct decision here. Um, but yeah, I guess that's a quick overview as a team. Look, I want to make these quick towards the end of the season. We don't have any trades. There's nothing else we can really do here. Um, most people have probably finished their team, so a lot of them probably tuning out to these videos that they don't really need to watch because they don't really need to improve their team moving forward. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll just look at the captaincies going forward now. I do think that Sicily into uh, St. Kilda, just, it has to be. It has to be in the loop. Um, the other things to consider before that, it's, I mean, I can definitely trust Sicily with the C, but I don't want to get baited off Sicily because I do think he's going to get a one, 
71, <laughs> sorry, 170. I, I would not be surprised to see that at all. Um, there's enough time between this Melbourne and Richmond game that we can actually wait for a later game. So I do think we can just VC Sicily into or actually doesn't work because we need a loophole who plays at a later time that I could use. Um, okay, no, we have West Coast loopholes, so that's fine. So we can do this. So that's what I am thinking. Uh, hopefully Laird is back this week and we can maybe get the full team on. Sheasel, though, into West Coast seems pretty good. Um, Constable plays too early. Maybe we'd look at setting up like that. And then look at the end of the day, if Laird isn't back, then we have the 23rd, so we just swing them on field, no problem. Uh, what we would do is we would do it like this. So then we can captain the West Coast player if we need at a later time. So I think that's the easiest way to set it up if I want to do a Sicily VC, but I don't know. I just, I think Sicily's just guaranteed such a good score that there's no point of looking at anyone else before. Um, I guess for those that are looking at others beforehand, obviously, once again, they're all premiums. We know what they can and can't do. Um, Dacos is always a shout, but is he going to go? Like, I don't know. You need to be looking at something ballistic here. Like, I, I want something that's going to tempt me off Sicily, and to tempt me off Sicily, you probably want 140 plus at minimum. So, honestly, not really looking at a lot of players in these games. Maybe English against Briggs, who's been not doing as well. That might be one to look at there. Um, Brisbane, ah, maybe you could look at the Dunkley or Neil here if you really wanted. Uh, Merritt's potentially. The showdown's always been good for Dawson, but not great. Yeah, I don't know. There's nothing there that fills me with the confidence that I would prefer over these. I mean, maybe Stewart you could throw in for a cheeky one. Um, GMHBA against Frio, who do give up points to defenders as well. So Stewart could potentially be the VC into Sicily, but yeah, it's so hard. I mean, obviously Sicily, like we we know Saint Kilda, like it, as as I said last time he played them, he dropped a one seventy two on them. Z will drop like a one seventy on them. He's just come off a one seventy. We know he, what he can do. I I think this is almost impossible to look past. So I think we're honestly better off looking at this and just going great. Sicily VC into track. I don't even feel bad doing track because track's being consistent enough. Um, as a worst case scenario, as I said, if you want maybe Stewart into track into Sicily, but I think that's the best one. Yeah, Sicily VC just because we we're banking him. Like we, we just we just know he's getting the good score. I'm gonna stop rambling about that because I just I can't stop talking about it. This means we need a West Coast loophole, so that's why this guy needs to be on field Dwower. Dower? I don't know. Um, keys can yeah, go there. Now, is there any... Oh, yeah, we can definitely just do this as well. So, we can see how Keys and Day go, and whoever does worse, we can just switch. Easy. And just bank whichever money it is, because I'm pretty happy putting Sheasel on field over those two. Honestly, Keys has been... If Keyes didn't have that fourth quarter he did, he was getting a 60, and it was going to be pretty depressing. But yeah, kicks two goals, which is great, and was just super involved and had like a 40-point spike at the end. Like, I don't even know what he was on, but like he was just... They were super impactful moments that you would think that he had like a 40-point final quarter. Like That's what I would think at minimum. Um, so, look, he hasn't been the greatest in the previous weeks. Um, he was obviously really good what we got him in for the 115, 19, 124. And then he's had 82, 75, 67. And honestly, this shouldn't have been any better than those two if he just didn't get those. Yeah, as I said, if he didn't have that massive fourth quarter. So he hasn't been tracking well recently, maybe looking around that 80 average. So I think what's most likely Day's going to get on instead. But as I said, I can just swing them back and forth depending on who has a good game. So there's nothing to really worry about. Uh, and that's assuming Laird's back. Because if Laird's not back, then cool doesn't really matter. Like, the decision's made for us. They both sort of get on. Um, I guess the only other thing to really consider there is... Can I swing Fletcher on field instead of one of them if I needed? Yeah, I think I could technically do that. Um... Because if Laird's on the bench, 
yeah, if Laird's on the bench, I can then swing keys up and down, depending on how that goes. Fletcher comes out with a good game. Great, keep Laird on field. Fletcher has a poor game. Could technically put keys up to put him on field. Um, yeah, once again, that's just if Laird's not named, but if Laird's named, no problem. But yeah, honestly, uh, team looks great. Pretty straightforward into next week. It's pretty team dependent, a lot of this stuff. But if you're in a similar situation where you have Dwower, Dower, Sheasel, very easy. Uh, flip back and forth with your 23rd player to make it nice and easy to choose which scores to take. But as I said, just bank in Sicily. I feel like if you're not looking at just banking Sicily, you, it, there's just no other real options. If uh, Either Stewart, English, and outside of that, I, I'm not confident on anyone else to get close to outscoring Sicily. So yeah, that's, uh, that's my video for the week, guys. Nice, easy, quick, wrapped it up. Week's looking good. Season's looking good. We're going to make this run home and get top 500 i'm feeling it so yeah thanks for tuning in everyone i appreciate y'all for being here so uh anyway peace later